how you knew Hogan from before? Did you always know? We, he, he broke in the business. I had been in the business for about two years, and he broke in the business out of Tampa, came up to the Pensacola, Mobile area where I was working for Southeastern, and the booker there was a guy named Louis Tillette, French-Canadian, who, who had traveled all over America, and had book, he booked a lot for the Fullers. And so they had him in as a booker, and he told Ron Fuller, he said, I have this guy out of Tampa. They call him the Hawk. They call him the Hawk with his French accent. And so he showed a picture to Ron Fuller, and Ron Fuller said, well, can this kid work? He says, you know, he's really green, but I think he's going to be a big star. And when he came into Pensacola, that's when I met him, and I met, he had his traveling partner, Eddie Leslie, and they were called the Boulder Brothers. Terry the Hawk Boulder and Eddie the Hawk Boulder. Uh, but it was Eddie Leslie and Terry Balea who were Hulk Hogan and, and Brutus Beefcake later on. So we met. They stayed at our apartment, myself and David Schultz. Uh, when their car was in their truck, their van was in the shop. They, they used my car. We shared our food. They, they were just, I mean, they weren't making any money. It was their first territory, and they were scared to death. I mean, they were afraid of everything. They were so afraid because they didn't understand the business. And here they are, you know, 500, 800 miles from Tampa, don't know anybody, and they see this cast of characters, me with long blonde hair, David Schultz with blonde hair, our heads all cut up with scars and scratches. And, but that's how we met. And then I didn't, he came to Memphis, we went to Memphis, and then Hogan and Eddie came to Memphis as the Boulder Brothers again. And they had a little short program there, and Jerry Jarrett got him a car. Got him his first green Lincoln Continental. I remember it. Jerry Jarrett went out and, and, and went down on the note for the car and everything. Then they moved on to Atlanta. And I didn't see them after they left Memphis until Calgary, which was about 12 years later. When you first saw Hogan... Uh, I knew right away he was money. Yeah, I, I, I knew what you were going to ask me. As soon as I saw this guy, I knew he was made of money. I mean, he just had, he had that long blonde hair. He had that Fu Manchu... He had this body, he was tanned. Uh, he did all the superstar Billy Graham stuff in his interviews and he was a great talker. And he actually learned how to work as he went along. Beefcake never had a lesson. I mean, we worked out with Beefcake just in the apartment and, and, and in the buildings. We would go early in Panama City and Pensacola and places. And he'd get in the ring and work out. Sometimes he borrowed my boots and everything because he didn't have boots to wear. But uh, they were two nice guys, really nice guys, and I knew they both had, were going to make money. And then when I met up with him in Calgary, he said, how come you ain't joined up with us yet? I said, well, I didn't know. I mean, you know, I didn't think I was good enough. And he says, man, you're as good as anybody else. He said, I, I'll have Vince call you tomorrow. Next morning, 8 o'clock, phone rang, and that was it. 